Richard Haas is president of the Council on Foreign Relations. Richard, we've been hearing for the better part of a year about Iran and its potential ability to develop nuclear weapons. How does this report change that? What does this mean? The bottom line is it really extends the timeline. We no longer really have to worry about 2007, 2008, maybe even 2009. It, it moves this beyond this administration's time in office, essentially gives more time for diplomacy conceivably to work. But their motives and desires haven't changed in your view. That's exactly right. Iran continues to try to enrich uranium, the basic stuff of a bomb. And even though they suspended their nuclear weapons program, there's no reason they might not start it up again once they had the explosive material. Let's listen to some of the things that President Bush has had to say about Iran in recent months. We believe they'd like to have a nuclear weapon. Part of our diplomacy is to prevent them from doing so. I've told people that if you're interested in avoiding World War III, it seems like you ought to be interested in preventing them from having the knowledge necessary to make a nuclear weapon. Pretty strong words. How might this affect the rhetoric? seems to me it has to tone it down. There's not the same sense of urgency. You don't get the feeling now this can all come to a head, that the administration can use this tremendous sense of fear and concern to drive the Security Council, say, to ratchet up sanctions much more. I think what this essentially does, it slows it down, it calms it down, but in no way does the problem go away. The long-term danger is still there. At the same time, there has been a disconnect between the White House and this national intelligence estimate. Why is that the case, and does it call into question the credibility of White House officials? People will say that, but I think it's also fair to say that you never know exactly. Even these intelligence estimates have varying degrees of, of confidence. And the administration also wants to send a very tough message. They want to influence Iranian decision-making. And it's quite possible that over the years, all this tough talk, the sanctions, the international pressure, the threat of military force might have influenced the Iranian program. Given this changing timeline, will the approach change in your view? Yes, I think what you'll see is continued diplomatic work, but less emphasis on, on, on military threats. And the, and the bottom line is this is unlikely to, to be resolved one way or another while Mr. Bush is still president. He has consistently said all options are on the table, including a military one. Do you think we'll stop hearing President Bush talk that way? He will not take the military option off the table. There's no reason he should. He wouldn't want to set that precedent. But I think you'll see a, a general lowering down of the temperature, a cooling uh, of the rhetoric. Otherwise, it'll look almost as if the administration were looking for a crisis, when in fact the idea of a crisis seems to have receded. This isn't the first time the administration and the national intelligence estimate has differed in their view of the world. Last year, they had very different opinions about the effect or the Iraq war was having on worldwide terrorism. Well, there's often going to be a disconnect between intelligence officials and policymakers. Policymakers are also intelligence officials in their own minds, and they're also going to be influenced by their political and policy preferences. So the idea that there's some tension was not invented by this administration. Richard Haas. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you, Kitty.